Okay, I think uh, the, the day has been quite intense and I think everybody wants to have a nice uh, final round table, but uh, I don't want to, to uh, go very far in time. So we will finish anyway at, at quarter to six. And uh, Vladimir, when you need to go, please do. And uh, well, the, the round table will start uh, just putting a question. And uh, please, each one of you could give your, your answer or your opinion. And from this, please, uh, you and the public uh, can say what you want or put new questions or answers or, or what you want. And the question is, how to bring science and technology closer to young people. Mm -hmm. uh, Maria, you want to start? Okay. I feel so small here. <laughs> <laughs> I give you one million. If, yeah. if you have the answer, I give you one million dollars. <laughs> yes. Well, um, actually, I, I am quite tired as well. And uh, in sort of a... A crisis now and um, that's why maybe I want to start uh, saying that uh, maybe we should change the question because uh, we've spent the whole day uh, talking about how to uh, get science and technology closer to children and youngsters and actually uh, when it concerns to the uh, youngest children, I mean two, three, four years old, they, or, or the oldest studies say that they are really curious and in, interested in what we call uh, inquiry-based education, uh, making questions, uh, analyzing things. So, well, I don't, know, I don't know if the question is how to get science and youngsters closer, or not to get them farther. I mean, I don't know whose is the problem. And today, for instance, in our um, speeches and presentations as well, there's sometimes that uh, I have said as well, bring science to a schools or take a schools to science. So maybe it's us who make that difference when maybe we shouldn't because it doesn't really exist. So. Uh, so, do everybody is, uh, <laughs> agree with the, with changing the question? <laughs> I, I think it's, it's a, a good point. Um, Gonzalo, could you? Yeah. Um, yesterday, I was in Barcelona in a congress, and we were also discussing about that. No? And what? Uh, well, uh, in from a point of view of my organization, uh, we only we don't only we don't want only to increase the interest of science in science, but also give the people as, uh, I think this morning you were talking about that also, give them the people a basic level of science uh, education, not only through formal uh, uh, ways, like in for a curricula of the, of the studies, but also uh, putting in context the science in science centers in science, with outreach activities. So this is an important, this is for, for me the main challenge, not, not increase the interest or decrease, or not, not, not only increase the interest, but give the people a, at least a literacy, a, the, the literacy they need for the, for the future to come. No? So that's, that's the point. And also another thing we were discussing yesterday is that should we really uh, promote more scientists? I mean, in now in, in some countries are are discussing, so for instance, the United States are discussing uh, if promote if, if promote science career uh, can give also back sight, I mean, uh, back sight in, in terms of uh, can be, uh, can create then uh, afterwards in PhD students a uh, frustration because uh, the science system cannot uh, absorb all the PhD students are now in U USA, USA uh, system. And it's happening in the same in Spain now. Uh, Unfortunately, uh, this crisis uh, is, is, uh, is, 
is, um, the cuts in science are being, are, being, are being really hard. So nowadays it's difficult to approach to the young people and say, you will, please, be a scientist because you will have a job because it's not true and it's not really true that you will have a job. For, fortunately, we expect that in the next, in the next for this generation, the expectations will be better, and that's what that's what we have to think. And we can't stop the the science education activities, no? Because some some people uh, yesterday they say, no, why you are why are you doing outreach activities? Or why are you are promoting from the government outreach activities if uh, if they don't have a job now? Okay. That's not, that's not the question. That's a, the question is, do we still have to do it because we expect a, 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 prior, a, a better future? But anyway, probably we don't need that every single st student uh, st uh, to st uh, continue to study science, but we need them to have a basic level of science. Vladimir, you may give us uh, yes. a yes. European um, vision of this. Well, I certainly would agree with that. <laughs> and uh, we are not interested in uh, promoting science as a career uh, as much as, as, I, as I did in my talk, it's about basic skills. So this is what's uh, important. Um, another thing that I was thinking about is how do we do that? Because this was the original question. <laughs> and um, of course, nobody has the answer to that. And it's not one policy or one way uh, and there are cultural differences so it is uh, it is all of the above <laughs> that I could say we could uh, uh, as long as we know where we want to go and this is about public understanding of the science of, uh, of, the, of science as a process this is where we want to go uh, and there are numerous ways to reach this goal and I was thinking in terms of today's generation which is very different from my generation in my generation, the lear learning occurred mostly in the classroom. In today's generation, learning occurs <laughs> basically anywhere else but in the classroom sometimes. Uh, and uh, the numbers are really staggering. I mean, I saw some of you guys uh, had this on the, on the screen in terms of where the actually young people get their information from. And it is not from textbooks these days, uh, because they're constantly on their gadgets. Uh, so how are we as, uh, we have to think, you know, 50, 50 years ago, our, we cannot be short-sighted like most politicians are. We have to think about what is happening with the generation they are going to be born now, and how they're going to be educated, starting their education in six or seven years from today. And taking advantage of this information society that every, every inf by a, you're just a click away from whatever you want to know. And how are you going to decipher all this huge amount of information? Uh, and how are you going to harness the tools to, uh, to, uh, uh, to reach this goal of public understanding of science using the internet or the Facebook or Twitter or Flickr, whatever you want to call it. Uh, that's, I think, a huge challenge and I don't think mm, educators have looked because we, I mean, as I said, my generation, we did not live this way. And today's generation lives a completely different lifestyle. And, and we, I don't think we're taking advantage of this lifestyle to get our goals done. It's just a thought. Okay, thank you. Kieran? Um, I'm glad I had time to think. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a very complex question, but I think it, to a certain extent, it goes back to what we mean by uh, science. I think we're clearer about what we mean by science than we are about technology. Yeah. Um, technology is pervasive, it's all around us. Um, so I think a young people's awareness of the existence of technology is not in doubt. Um, but in each country there's a different emphasis on what we think as educators they should learn in terms of information. And uh, certainly um, from my perspective, and I think probably from um, um, my own university college's perspective, it would be more about um, enabling them to become uh, critical users of technology and being able to use it um, in terms of, of, if you like, um, being innovative and in terms of science, uh, applying it to um, what we talked about, ill-defined problems, in other words, problems that 
there are no answers to necessarily, um, as opposed to say having the knowledge break formula where you know the teacher knows before they present the problem that x will equal minus six. So, but at the same time, it has to be fun. So I think it's a, it's a huge question, but I think at the end of the day, for example, I think where we come from, we're obsessed by assessment. And, 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 and you know, that, that's a problem. It really is a problem. I think we've got to listen to pupils more about what they think they need. Um, and, you know, but for me, it's about how we can, I mean, we are sitting with pupils and, and, and trying to prepare them for jobs that don't exist yet. And that's a huge challenge. How do you do that? So for me, it's about making them, you know, aware of how they can apply knowledge in a critical way. Just one more thing, on it. <laughs> yes, I just wanted to to answer and to comment that I completely agree uh, with what we talked about the basic skills in science in order to face both the professional life and also social and uh, life. Uh, and I also agree that uh, probably interest is, alre is already something that uh, could be, um, shall we say, covered uh, in terms of science and technology uh, among uh, youngsters. But the gap, apparently, the gap uh, exists between, well, they say they are interested but they don't choose it as a career. So apparently it's interesting, but it's not attractive or something like that. And, and as a main result of a Stimula project, well, um, the um, uh, students still uh, relate uh, science careers uh, with uh, difficulty, uh, competitiveness, uh, and probably with very few or specific um, job options, and um, maybe those aspects uh, that could be probably considered stereotypes uh, could be a key in, in which to work in, maybe opening the mind and relating science uh, careers with other job opportunities, different ones, and, uh, well, uh, giving these sorts of messages. In a way, I, uh, it seems to me that it's natural for people not to want to go into the sciences. It is in the nature of things. As I mentioned, make following a logical argument is not very human-like. Humans use intuition, 95% of them. So probably the people who are naturally inclined to think using the slow thinking, as Daniel Kahneman has written about it, and the slow thinking is really very, requires a lot of effort and people don't want to do the effort. It's, and this is why politicians are so successful. <laughs> uh, because people do not make, they do not follow logical argument and uh, the political campaigns do not rely on logical argument. And psychologists have known this for centuries. <laughs> Manipulation of humans. Is, so what I'm trying to say is that uh, I'm not sure if we want students to go into the scientists because it's not, it's not unrealistic. They have to be interested and have to appreciate it. And those who are naturally inclined, they will naturally go. This is just my personal view here. Well, yeah, it depends, I mean, um, mm, depends of the cultural uh, circumstances. I mean, uh, yeah. if you go to, uh, I mean, if you, uh, we, for instance, work at, le at, at national or state level, and we find, we find a, a very different context in, in students. No? Mm -hmm. For instance, you have here uh, some samples of people that are working with the small rural schools in uh, mm -hmm. countryside that they don't have contact with science. And even if they have, if they are, oh, some of the yeah. students yeah. are talent, they don't have contact with that, they don't know about that, so they will never go yeah. to study that. So we still have yeah. some students that we should promote uh, Absolutely. science careers in them because they don't have the opportunity to get contact with that. Right, but right. at the same time, we also, f and now uh, every, uh, they say this is the, they, uh, they say C generation, no? the, the generation always connected. No? So we have, we have all this connect, connected generation. So we, uh, we in, in our foundation, we are trying to address young people through the media 
the, through the uh, yeah. channels yeah. they are uh, yeah. uh, they are in. I mean, social yeah. media. For instance, we are promote, we are stressing, we are getting making efforts to bring or deliver uh, in re reliable information through so social media in our profiles to young people and to give and to have conversation with them right. in this in the social media. Um, we sometimes uh, I think we are doing a, a good job in that because we have a lot of uh, response from them, mm. and uh, also uh, initiatives like uh, Fame Lab. Where I don't know if you know about that. You will you will have a representative of uh, I mean the winner of Spain at last of at the at the end of the of this meeting. This uh, uh, Fame Lab is an international uh, science uh, monologues context. Uh, mm. Well, that is in in 25 countries now and. What we try to do is explain this, the, the, the science in other languages and in a more, uh, in a, as you say, in a non-slow thinking uh, <laughs> a, a process, but in, in, a, in, in, in the way that young people now consume information, which is three minutes video, three minutes talk. Okay, so we have maybe to change formats of, of uh, I'm, 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 I'm talking about informal education, and I'm in talking about I'm talking about uh, journalists. Uh, I mean, science journalists they, that also have. Uh, um, I mean, can help us to promote interest or to promote basic uh, knowledge in in science. No? Perhaps one point that, that, that I would like to make from the perspective of a teacher. I think um, it's it's um, important that they have the tools and the resources to engage the pupils pur purposefully. I mean, I think as a teacher, if you can walk out of the classroom at the end of the day, and I, I mean, I was a teacher, and you feel satisfied that you have been able to engage the pupils as best you can with the tools that you have, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and that they've had a, you know, a unique learning experience, then if the pupil decides not to take up that subject, that's great. But on the other hand, if you are under-resourced, if the school does not have the facilities, and we were talking about equity earlier on, and you know, then there's something wrong. And I think, as a society, then that's a bigger, you know, in, in the micro level at the school, it's, it's, is there an equal playing field? Do we have resources at the micro level? I mean, is it something that we should look at at school? So I wouldn't see it so much as we're, we're concerned about churning out engineers and scientists per se, but that the children have the, an equal opportunity to make that choice. And, and I think the days of a teacher probably doing what I'm doing now, of talking too much and the didactic approach and the jug and the mug is gone. I agree with that. Uh, obviously, we don't need and we don't want that every student uh, goes and uh, well goes for a scientific career. But uh, in my opinion, that should uh, stay among the options. And uh, at least not to uh, stop being an option because of uh, no false stereotypes. So just uh, to open the whole uh, ocean. But again, it's a really, uh, as Kieran said, uh, it's a social equity issue because the difference is are between schools, uh, mostly. It's um, how do we deal with the family background, with the social economic disparity, and uh, this is where, as they say, the key for success in that case. So we, in other words, to, to be able to reach out to everyone without discrimination, so to speak. From your idea, actually, it's, it's uh, really uh, everybody had to agree about this. Uh, it's not easy to to uh, think uh, analytically and critically, and um, but uh, look at this. If if we take this idea, uh, we have a, a world that uh, is increasingly depending on science and technology then we need more people working in science and technology. And it looks like there is a, a kind of roof of people uh, doing this work because it's difficult and people don't want. And uh, 
we, we can reach a, a bad situation where some people is controlling this increasingly complicated, uh, technologically developed world? I just wanted to mention uh, Charles Percy Snow is a great uh, thinker, a British one, who wrote, I think, 70, 70 years ago about the different, the different, the two cultures, the scientific and on one hand and the humanities, and they don't really don't speak to each other, they don't understand each other's language, and I think that is the uh, huge challenge, uh, um, because you said. Uh, well, we need more people to go into. Uh, I still believe that it is more important, not people to go into the careers of science, but it's more people to be able to understand the language of science. That's the key issue. And I read recently about this golden rice issue that uh, in the Philippines, we're trying to uh, raise this uh, genetically modified rice version, which contains a lot of vitamin A and prevents uh, <coughs> Uh, blindness in the developed world. However, you have on the one side, you have the scientists who have created it and it's really absolutely harmless. And on the other side, you have the fear mongering of Greenpeace and some others actually who sent farmers to destroy the trial. As a result of that, you have, uh, you have this disconnect. And this is where the problem is. We, we have the technology, we have the advances, and they've not been allowed to develop because of the lack of understanding, because of the fear. So what do we do? Okay, I understand that this is uh, an extreme uh, example, uh, but um, actually I, I face a, a problem about uh, uh, people that has a, a basic uh, literacy in science, um, Let's say I, I, I'm, I'm teaching in, in the uh, first uh, course of, of the physics degree. So I, I have uh, students that have a quite higher level in, in science, but uh, these pupils are not able to understand most of the technology in, in, in a deep uh, um, way. So uh, of course, uh, some some uh, common language is, is okay, but still uh, many technology is prepared for people uh, to use it, uh, but not to understand actually how this technology is developing. And uh, I don't think the, the problem is uh, just to resolve the, the communication between the, the two cultures. I'm not saying that you need to know, you know, for you to drive the car, you don't need to know the internal combustion engine, the way it works. <laughs> you don't need to know the way technology works, but you don't have to be afraid of driving the car. You see, and this is what uh, I'm talking about. It's, it's the concept, the public understanding of the good, what, of the good things that science brings, not instead of understanding we have fear. Uh, and it's not, and, and this is what really seems to be the problem. You don't need to know technology, how it works, no. But you need to appreciate it. Well, at the same time, you may not need to know how it works, but I think the question is, uh, the issue might be that at least you should have the opportunity. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. To, to, yeah. to know yeah. how it works, yeah. because yeah. that avoids a monopoly of knowledge oh, absolutely. Being, being in yeah. commercial yeah. hands yeah. And, and that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, and, um, but, but your issue about we're back to the te technology thing. I think there is a natural sort of evolution, even in education, where uh, children, you know, at the age of, say, those who are more specialists than me at five, have a natural curiosity, or you talked about intuition, about taking things apart and building things, and there's no fear, and then we channel them through a formalized education system. But however, at the end of it, some people choose to have a career in a particular field, and it is, it is when you get them at your level, I suppose if you're talking about going through the artery, the STEM artery, as some people might refer to it, that at least they come prepared with a critical mind and they understand that they have a responsibility to the rest of us, um, you know, for society to, to, to look after us, if you like. And I think, I mean, those are issues, I think, that are important. And ethical issues obviously come into it as well, you know. And 
Only, only one. What I, what I um, for instance, what we experience is now we have questions from students that also they don't find in internet reliable information about the, what they want to know. For instance, yesterday or two days ago, we had a, a tweet from a father that was asking, please, uh, my, my sister, my daughter is a student now something about biology, but I would like to have more information, far, further more information and reliable information, more than Wikipedia. Because now, you, I, you don't know if, if now, uh, but now there are studies that said that most of the students are now doing the, the and studying with Wikipedia, and sometimes it's not enough, and sometimes they, even if Wikipedia is working very good, but some, sometimes we should also improve the, the channels we provide information to the young people, because as you said at the beginning, they are not uh, anymore uh, studying as the, as our or the past generations studied. So this is also a, a challenge we have, no? Well, I wouldn't be afraid of Wikipedia, but unfortunately, they're looking at tons of other stuff out there, which yeah. is, uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> which is the problem. <laughs> Wikipedia is good, <laughs> and I suppose that's the point about criticality. I've been able to look at stuff. Sorry, uh, that's the point I suppose about criticality. Yeah. To, to to enable them to understand that everything they read on the internet is not it's necessarily not true. true. Yeah. true absolutely. Yeah. 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 yeah, But this is what with the critical thinking to mm. be able to I mean have to question <coughs> everything. Everything that is written in the Daily Mail or Daily Telegraph mm. or uh, said on the nightly news. Mm. Mm. If, uh, and people normally don't question things. And that is what science is all about, mm. questioning. Mm. Yeah. I'm sure that uh, everybody in the hall have uh, an opinion, a question or something to say. Come on. First of all, thanks very much. We've had a really interesting day. Well, my opinion. <laughs> I'm sure everybody else has the same opinion too. And we've had plenty to think about. We've had interesting conversations at coffee, at lunch. It's been great. So thank you very much. Um, oof, where do I start? Uh, first of all, going back to the idea of scientific thinking not, be a nat not being a natural way of thinking, I don't agree. I think small children are very good scientists because that's how they discover the world. I think uh, very small children are experimenting non-stop from the minute they wake up in the morning till the minute they go to bed. Somewhere in the process, that curiosity is um, <laughs> squished, uh, which is a good word for, that means stopped, or at least changed into something else. And I'm wondering whether it's um, the fault of the education system or it's just a natural process in which that kind of scientific way of thinking. I mean, you imagine a two-year-old in the garden and he might uh, poke around in the soil and find a worm. Oh, and what happens if you chop it in half? And oh, look, it still moves. That's, that's questioning. That's science. And so and later on, that, that kind of curiosity seems, seems to disappear. And I'm wondering if we can't harness that and keep it going through the system, which leads me to the next point, and that uh, most of the stuff we've been talking about or listening to today has been related with secondary aged children. Um, and I'm wondering whether a lot of your opinions would work better with primary age or even younger. <laughs> yes. So. Um, all right, I think that it's, it's a key point. I think that the, the best work w would be to understand this, the, the moment where, where uh, children uh, are less curious. I, I think this is a, a natural process. I mean, uh, I think that Curiosity is, is not the only ingredient for science, and the analysis and the, the construction of a model to understand this, this experimentation is quite more difficult to, to organize in, in the mind. Uh, I think the human being is, is uh, uh, actually, the human being evolved uh, uh, 
thanks to the to the curiosity and the experimentation, and this very connected with the the way the, the mind works, but uh, the construction of models and the, the analytical thinking, I think it's more artificial. But of course, if we can use this momentum of, of the small children to learning to, to use this curiosity and keep them developing a, 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 an analytical and a critical thinking will be nice and, and actually the, my experience is very, very difficult to develop, to design activities, uh, outreach activities of science to children, but I think they are most important. Can't we more agree on your comments? And but unfortunately, I don't know the answer of the question. Either if it's a natural process or a, 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 well something related with the educational system. I don't know. Probably it it's got something. I mean, it's an interaction of of factors. Because well, I'm not I'm not a teacher, but uh, I've heard teachers uh, saying that um, well, the own methodology of the of the teaching process sometimes uh, stops that uh, questioning and answering uh, dynamic, but uh, especially is based in telling things and just well ask at the end. I don't know. I, I, I think what you've said is, is obviously coming from your own experience is very perceptive, but if I could attempt to answer it, it's only my own opinion, um, not based on any scientific research, but as a teacher, I think it's very easy to switch off the curiosity of a child. Uh, because <clears throat> if you look at a young child, when there's no fear, uh, when they're investigating the petal of a flower or they're investigating something in nature, they're not, they're, they're not that, that level, they're not then expecting to do a written test, you know? And, and when they enter <laughs> into the classroom, it's so structured, there's the fear of failure. And I think that can then take over to, to, to a sort of mechanistic way of getting through life that I know if I do A, B, and C, I will get through the exam. Is there an answer to that? Is there, is there, I, I don't know, but, I, but what I do know is that, you know, again, we're back to the equity uh, question because, McKinsey said that you, you don't have excellent schools without excellent teachers. And then you drill down into that and say, well, what constitutes an actual, uh, an excellent uh, structure for an excellent classroom, for an excellent teacher, and so on and so forth. And I think you, we've got to have, all of us have to have space to think, you know. So for me, uh, I think your question is a, an important one, and it's to nurture that enthusiasm that f and to celebrate failure as much as success, for them to learn that, you know, if you fail, that's part of, that, that doesn't mean you fail, that just means that you're, you're, you're on the path of experimentation. And to take that out of it, it's very, very difficult to achieve if you're a teacher with 40 minutes and 30 pupils. It's extremely challenging. And, and those are day-to-day -day issues for teachers. I apologize, because I really have to go if I am to catch my plane. <laughs> Uh, and uh, I just wanted to clarify, I think there, this is a maybe a misunderstanding. I mean, we have to define our, what we mean by scientific thinking, and I think we are operating different, with different definitions here. Yes, curiosity is one thing, and uh, taking apart a truck or something, but this is not what um, is expected from um, what we mean by scientific uh, way of thinking, which includes setting up controls, experimental evidence, and slowly evaluating the results in terms of it. it really, it is a completely different way of thinking, which, I mean, if anyone in, is interested, I would be happy to share the, the, the literature, which uh, is, I mean, one, the, the one that really, 
uh, got me excited about this issue was um, um, Alan Cromer from Northeastern uh, University in Boston, um, who was a physicist, actually, not an educator. Well, he was an educator at the university, but he, was, uh, uh, he wrote this book um, called Uncommon Sense. Uh, the heretical uh, nature of science. And I would highly recommend to anyone to have a look at this one, back in 1993, uh, and um, in which he actually makes very uh, uh, historical analysis of how humans think and how actually deductive reasoning as such was developed by accident in one place in the world, nowhere else and then how it is this precious flower that has been carried off from one civilization to another. Uh, and uh, his argument is that the middle school level is this is where you make or break people in, in terms of the way they think. Um, between 10 and 14, I guess. If you're able to, and that's why he designed for the middle school in uh, uh, school system in Boston, he designed a special program where he, um, but I don't know what happened with it in the end. Uh, but anyway, that's, uh, I think there is a little bit of a mismatch of what each of us understand, and this is what I understand, <laughs> My, and this is where I'm coming from. Uh, and again, I apologize for it. Yeah, and thank you for everyone. Yeah. yeah, well, I agree with uh, the, the, I mean, the, what he said about uh, scientists, uh, I mean, science, science method is, is a little bit different from children's uh, way of thinking. But anyway, uh, what we found uh, in this study I was talking before is that only 20% of people in for uh, of uh, 15 and 16 years have still doubts, doubts about what we will they will study uh, if science or so social of science or social science and humanity. So we the decision is uh, the decision moment is probably before it's, in, it's at the beginning of the secondary school with 12, 13, 11, between 10 and 14 as he said. So. Um, that's almost primary school, so that could be, uh, I mean, we are re, uh, uh, re-elaborating probably our, our focus in, 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 this kind, in this age for, for promoting science career, which is different from other kind of things. Hmm. Anyway, I, I still say that uh, perhaps the, the point for, for keeping this uh, natural interest in, and curiosity in nature, let's say between three and eight, um, is the, the most difficult, uh, for me, are, are the most difficult ages for, for developing uh, activities. And perhaps th this is the key for, for keeping uh, the pupils interested in, in science, and uh, with a, a basic a, a basic level for just uh, trying to to get the best from this about all these ideas of uh, more people uh, in science and technology careers and and all this Sorry, I'm, I'm going to change another time the, the original question. Uh, how to bring science and technology closer to the politician? <laughs> Come on, we have just five minutes and... <laughs> <laughs> okay, good question. How to... Okay, I, I think everybody are more or less convinced uh, on the basic things and uh, how to... Well, Politicians or, or public, uh, I mean, um, uh, we, we can face a, a kind of society where people is uh, more or less or have more or less a, a basic literacy in science, but is not interested at all in, in science or are just a uh, few interested. And um, do do we need to to give uh, apart from from the uh, literacy and, and the 
the work with with uh, young people uh, do we need the, to to stress the the interest in the general public is this the way for for catching the the politicians no, I, I just even if we have only five minutes i will just answer with an with a just with a sentence because recently i read an article about uh, what uh, it was about the Basque Parliament, but about what uh, the parliamentary uh, politicians had studied. And that was the clue, because I think 80% studied laws. So. Yeah. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that question you ask is, is uh, uh, Probably extremely difficult, but I can give you context in Northern Ireland, there was a report brought out in 2009 called the STEM Review of Northern Ireland. There were 17 recommendations made, and it was all to do with the, the STEM archery from primary school right up to, 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 to university, and how, how do we tackle this issue of lethargy, of lack of interest, perceived, alleged lack of interest. And, and, and recommendation number 17 was that there should be a STEM czar, that type of person, maybe you, somebody who actually knew something about STEM, somebody who was informed about education, who would take up a position um, within government to advise government about what was needed within the education system. Because when politicians start talking to politicians, the only thing they, that is going through their head are votes. I mean, uh, the next headline. So, in, in my opinion, at, at a local level, uh, by the way, that recommendation wasn't taken up. So we need somebody within government who actually understands what education is about and who knows, you know, to speak for us and for the children. And I think until we get that, you know, my answer to your question was, good luck if you try to convince mm -hmm. the politicians. I, Mission impossible. Yeah, I agree with all of you. I mean, uh, probably we we need more uh, science board, as, as in the United States, for instance, they have science board, which is independent to the, and it's, it's advising in science, uh, in science uh, uh, issues uh, to the government, to the presidential, to the, White, to the White House directly. And we don't have this uh, in Spain. I think it's, it could, we could, I mean, it's a, it's a need we have because, uh, if you go to the parliament, they have a political um, uh, commission, which is, is I mean, they, they are the more, uh, the, probably they are the parliamentarians, the, parliament, the, the, um, the politicians are more specialized in science, but they are looking at the problems with a political view. And we don't have this independent commission or independent science board, advisory board, I think it's called in the United States. And also in the, term, in the way that it, it works all the administration in Spain, for instance, I can give you my example in my foundation. We are a public foundation and we are dependent from the ministry. In 11 years, we have six directors because every time the government changed the minister changed every time we have a change so that's that that's that's um, I mean that that's not that doesn't work uh, in for instance in in United States the similar organization as us in the United States is National Science Foundation and they have to be uh, the president of the National, National Science Foundation has to be elected by the Senate of, of the United States with a majority of two-thirds of the of the of the chamber, and that that's the way it works in a serious country, uh, the science policy. <laughs> okay, uh, it's, it's just a uh, quarter to six. Um, I think it's been a quite intense day about all these uh, issues. Uh, we, we could uh, stay <laughs> talking about, but I think it's enough for today. It's time for having some relax and having some humor, and uh, it's time for Eduardo. Uh, Eduardo, you know, he's, he's gonna, uh, going to give us a, a monologue about science or, or some stuff.